Good. Welcome to Flutter Festival 2022. Um, our series of getting our uh, hands dirty with some code. Uh, we expected this a few a few um, meetings earlier because we we wanted a workshop and this is our occasion to uh, get together for uh, creating an app so thank you for being here um this flutter festival that we are talking about it's a festival announced by flutter do you guys see my screen i think yes should be yes yeah okay so this is a festival uh announced by flutter uh from um january 20th of january to 30th of april 2022 uh all the countries you can see here but this is not the official list of the meetups you can see here that the events created for this uh, um global event flutter festival this time uh, we created our part of the Flutter Festival, Flutter Festival Romania, in which we have a five series, a five session series in which we will be coding. Um, and this event was uh, created by collaborating with our new friends from GDG Cluj Napoca. Uh, they actually, Octavian actually came with the idea to organize this together. And uh, now we have an event, probably you saw the, the event page. Um, this Flutter festival has a really nice description. So build beautiful application with Google technologies. This Flutter festivals is a community led event series uh, where developers can join to learn the fundamentals of Google technologies featuring Flutter, Firebase or and Google Cloud content. And uh, they said to um, present this video to the audience. So I would like to present the video with you guys. One second. Uh, let's switch my sound to the internal mixer. Perfect. And Alex, we, we can't hear it, unfortunately. You can see it? We, we can see it, but we can't hear it. Oh, one second, why? I'm not sure. But the sound is so nice. So one second to check the sound settings. Every time I am live, this happens. <clears throat> One second, guys. Bear with me, please. So you should hear it. Let's try again. Ah, OK. You don't hear it. <laughs> I get it. I have too many buttons here. OK, now I see why. One second. Um, do, 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 I have to plug this in. I forgot. Okay. Now we have sound. At least we should. Nope. Good. Now. It is now or not. Okay. All passengers, special announcement. New destinations have been announced. Please be advised and plan accordingly. All aboard. This was it. So we are officially announcing Flutter Festival Romania. Welcome here. And um, thank you for our sponsors. Um, you can see our sponsors on the official page of uh, um, Flutter Meetup. 
Um, thank you for being with us again for this session. And also thank you for the volunteers that made this happen um, in collaboration with Adrian, uh, Adrian Montan and Octavian Hasna. Thank you guys for being here. They worked hard to, to bring this event. I don't see Octavian. No, but I see Adrian. Okay. And uh, also leave you and Alex for day. <laughs> and Andrea, leave you, uh, Andrea to the right. Andrea is here, leave you with us? Uh, no. Oh, I don't hear you. Now I'm hearing. But she's in spirit. Okay. Good. Um, this Flutter Festival is a series of events all over the world. So make sure that you seek the web for other events. They are bringing uh, speakers, um, workshops, um, a lot of uh, resources and uh, co-working uh, projects on these sessions. Uh, our proposal was uh, this five event series in which we'll be creating together an app. Um, so this is the biggest news from Flutter's community. And also I saw uh, information that Flutter integrate, integrates the uh, Microsoft uh, Microsoft-like design as Cupertino and Material, I think that is called Sapphire or something. Okay. Um, for those of you that doesn't know what Flutter is, uh, you can find more information on flutter.dev. Yeah, so Flutter is a framework uh, created by Google. It, it is a very promising one. Uh, they are promising that you can simply and dynamically create apps uh, for all sorts of platforms like uh, on iOS, Android, web, uh, Linux, and uh, also embedded, and wi Windows. Um, I personally joined Flutter community, I think, one and a half years ago uh, by being very curious about this promise that is for me was very big like uh, coding with a single code base and obtaining native apps for iOS, iOS and Android and uh, I saw that it's working I really loved the Dart language to learn it uh, then I discovered a lot a lot of features that uh, really um, gets the mobile development to another level uh, this event uh, that we are preparing are um, happening weekly and we have a five sessions event starting with this one. Um, you guys had to receive this manual on uh, the private message that we sent from uh, Meetup and from uh, uh, and from our friends from GDG. In this manual, if you don't have it, I will share the link with you right now here. Let's see my message box. Okay, so Octavian is not here for the moment, but certainly here is here uh, he is with us. So yeah, this is a manual that we guys prepared uh, for you. Uh, those are the starting resources uh, that are used to get started with Flutter. Uh, so what is Flutter about? Uh, what are the uh, links from the official documentation and the steps to understand uh, the Scratch code base, like folder structures, and to get started with running your first app. Um, also, there are a few information about the event and the, the official repository for this, this event, which is here on Romania Flutter Meetup Flutter Festival 2022. We prepared some code for you and each session, after each session, we'll be publishing the code on onto GitHub. Okay, uh, those are, so in the manual, you find the steps to, to run the code. Uh, you can find about more about uh, me and Liviu that will be uh, keeping this workshop and uh, also Adrian and Octavian will help us at, as mentors. Uh, and also uh, some details about this session and what are the dates for the next sessions. So 
for this particular session, we'll be talking about widgets. We'll be giving examples of widgets. Um, what is a stateful or stateless widget? What is a layout in Flutter? Uh, how you can obtain it and uh, particularize it. And also, uh, we'll be coding a little. This is our Discord channel. I'll leave you, uh, gave you the link into, into the chat. And yeah, uh, this is what takes to get started. So uh, just a question, a quick question. Please raise your hand, guys. Who has Flutter installed on your computer and ready to code? So we have Adrian and Voiko and Bogdan. Okay, uh, so it seems like we are a few of us. Okay. Good. Um, it is very important. This uh, event, uh, event series is created like workshops. So if you want to code with us, uh, you, uh, you have to follow the manual and have the core installed, the SDK and everything. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so we have like seven of us. I saw like had installed the Flutter on their computer. Uh, then guys, you can uh, follow the steps for installing Visual Studio Code and uh, all flat, uh, that Flutter takes to run uh, from the manual. And then after each session, you can go to the uh, repository and see uh, each branch with the uh, code that we prepare. So now we have the initial com uh, commit and then we'll be having uh, each branch for each session. Uh, we have the mentors, so me and Liviu. Uh, I am a full stack developer and Liviu is a senior Flutter developer. So Liviu, hello. Hello, hello. Um, can you tell us something about you? A sure. Little? I'm Liviu. Um, I've been working with Flutter since uh, it's alpha. Uh, and I have had the luck to work on real projects uh, while I was working for an agency in London. And I've been fortunate to gather a lot of experience and I'm excited to share that with you. Thank you, Livio. Thank you. Okay, um, this is a moment when we'll be joining the uh, first the dark side and then the second dark side of Flutter like the theory and then the coding. So if you guys have any questions for the moment, please let me know. Can you repeat the question, please? Uh, well, my question was if you have any questions. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, so it feels nice to be here. Let's get started. Okay, uh, we'll be. I will be taking the steps to run the project, and we'll be uh, commenting on the project itself. This is a getting started uh, tutorial with uh, some um, some coding for obtaining the splash screen of the app. We'll be creating an app for GDG Cluj Napoca Meetup. Uh, we try to. Um, create an app in which to present their past events and their next events. And for the moment, yeah, for sure, we'll be working with the uh, initial thing, which is the splash screen. So Voiko, do you have a question? No, I saw a hand. <laughs> okay. I have to lower it. So what you have to do in order to run this uh, initial code, all you have to do is to go on GitHub. You find the address in the manual. Uh, and then uh, I will take it by uh, SSH, but you can go and clone it uh, by downloading the repo. And also, I think we can get the zip archive. OK. Good. And I will unzip this on my desktop. Come on. Okay. 
So this is the archive and then I'm just unzipping it. Okay. And I will be opening a new Visual Studio Code instance. I'm curious to who code in Visual Code and who decided to code in Android Studio. Let's go for the ones that codes in Visual in Android Studio. So please raise your hand. Okay, you have a, a very powerful computer. Probably. <laughs> okay, thank you. The rest of us are coding into Visual Studio. So. Yeah, I started in Android Studio and then switched to Visual Coding in half a year or so. Why? From curiosity. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was too hard on my system. 60 gigabytes of RAM wasn't enough for it, it seems. Yeah, we totally feel you. Okay, so this is the um, initial screen of Visual Studio. I will open the app by opening a folder in we, that we downloaded now, Flutter Festival main, and we can open the project here. Uh, because I have all the extensions for Visual Studio, um, he detects that we haven't installed the packages that are into pubspec.yaml, so I will run the command for installing all the packages. Are and we on the right branch, Alex? Yeah, we are on the main branch. Cool. Do we need to go on the session one branch? So, well, you know, me and Liv, you work for this session, and uh, I have the branch locally. Just prepare. All right. After. <laughs> Let's start That's tonight. The, the command line command <laughs> to download the packages. Sorry? The command line command to download the packages needed. Uh, I think it's Flutter pub get or something like this. Yes, Flutter pub get. Yeah. Okay, I have an emulator in place. How can I open the terminal here? Let's see. Terminal. <laughs> but we already installed it. Flutter pub get. Oh, I'm a hacker now. Okay, um, we'll be working into the lib folder. Uh, we put a link into the manual to see what is the folder structure. Um, mainly, we'll be focusing on uh, the assets folder, the lib folder, and uh, on the pubspec.yaml with a little uh, improvement on analysis options if something gets really annoyed and <laughs> don't let us to code our scratchy way. Okay. So this is like the starting point of an end of a Flutter app. Yeah, this, uh, this function here, this main function, that is initializing an instance of my app. So uh, there is this uh, expression in Flutter that everything is a widget. After discussing with uh, Livio a little, uh, he demonstrates me that not everything, not every everything, it's a widget. And I was a little sad, but yeah, this is a widget. This is uh, how a widget looks like. Uh, usually uh, they are extending um, stateless or stateful widget, and they are having this build method. Um, that is mandatory to be overrided. <clears throat> and to run our app, we can use the debugger from the Visual Studio, which will launch our app on the Android device. If you have a real device, uh, especially 
uh, iOS, uh, you have to go to open the runner file and change some configuration there. Like you have to change the default exa um, example package name to a particular domain. Okay. So yeah, until this app launches and builds, um, if someone wants to tell us something, I am here. So please feel free to open your mic wherever you want to sell to tell us something. Uh, I have a question. Sure. Um, can you explain how the entire process uh, will go? Uh, I know this sounds strange, but me for one, um, I haven't been on any workshop uh, so far in my programming career. So I, I'm not sure what to expect, uh, of what will I do, for example. Sure. So uh, we expect to code with us. Uh, we expect you to code with us. And this is what we prepare. So in the first part of each event, we'll be talking a little about the components that we'll be reaching into uh, this coding workshop. And then we'll be starting actually to code together and obtaining a result that implements all that we discussed for the theory part. Okay, thank you. So for this particular event, uh, we'll be talking a little about uh, this particular structure, uh, how to run it on uh, emulator. And then we'll be talking about widgets, layout, about material app. Uh, what is a stateful and a stateless widget with some examples. And then we'll be uh, getting to the coding workshop in which we'll be integrating um, this splash screen that we promised at the beginning of the event. Uh, is it okay? So, Sorry. Uh, yeah, Fabian here. So what's the level of knowledge that we should have in order to participate to this type of event? Because from what I've seen, you jumped straight to the emulators and everything. Yeah. But what are supposed what are we supposed to know before going to this? Okay, so we expect you to know uh, what stands for coding in, in Flutter. And this is why we prepared the manual and send it to, to you before the event. Uh, to have the ID in place to be able to um, simulate an app and uh, to know about the coding part that stands for, for Dart. It is not so important to really know Dart, but it is important to know what's uh, object-oriented programming and uh, yeah, <laughs> at least okay. object-oriented programming. Okay, great, great, great. thanks. You are welcome and thank you for your question. So it feels like having the video call and also trying to compile this app is a pretty hard job for my laptop. We'll be staying just a few moments more. Okay. Do we have any other questions? What theme are you using for your VS Code? <laughs> I don't really know the name. Uh, okay. it, it is a really interesting name. It is not the simplest dark theme. I think they are having something default. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing now, opening the settings on Visual Studio Code. Yeah, fine, fine <laughs> So let's see. Into the workspace, text editor. No? Okay. I don't really know it. So it was uh, something when I started to use Visual Studio Code, they asked me, like, do you want this white or black? And I was like, oh, this is more nicer than just dark. So did someone know when where I found a theme for this? If you, do, if you do command shift, you can switch, yeah. 
Command Shift H. P. Uh, P. Uh, P. Command Shift P. Okay. Theme. And search for theme. Yeah. Uh, and preferences color theme. Let's see. Awesome. So it's this Dracula. Yeah. Dracula. <laughs> Okay, something is wrong with this uh, with this build. Um, I'll relaunch it and let's go uh, discussing about widgets. So this uh, this thing that it is a widget in Flutter, uh, it was my uh, first curiosity. I was like, okay, I know that uh, my experience is in WordPress and uh, they are having this like everything. Uh, can be uh, extended and uh, there is a plugin for that and Flutter says like there is a widget for that and I was like okay what what is this widget so basically a widget is an object uh, after learning a little Dart I saw that uh, actually in Dart everything or almost everything it is an object so the paradigm should be the same for for Flutter and uh, these widgets um, are, are like, if you know the Matryoshka, the Russian, Russian toy, so you have like a widget in widget in widget and uh, they are actually integrates very well and you can um, use for uh, making a more granular app based on components, split it on components. So let's go and find some more about widgets. On Flutter Dev. This Flutter Dev website is the place when you can get all the explanation. They're having a lot of really nice uh, documented materials to learn for, from also free courses and workshops. So if you want to learn Flutter, it is very easy to do it by yourself. Okay. Wrong click. So yeah, basically you imagine that uh, a text component in Flutter is a widget or uh, the animation that switches from a screen to another can be a widget or uh, the styling properties or the, the styling uh, methods uh, can stand uh, in, in the background of a widget. And this leads us to the first uh, interesting thing that we'll be doing today on uh, building layouts in Flutter, because this is the first thing that you usually do when you start creating an app. So um, those are visible widgets. You have like an image or a text or an icon. And uh, also, the app itself, uh, it is a widget. And this is really interesting because this, my app can be a widget that we can reuse in another component. And um, yeah, this makes things like really scalable. Okay. Um, this is our initial app. Welcome to GDG Cluj, in which we'll be... Um, this is our, our support to learn what sends, uh, what this code stands by. So we have the starting point, the main function, and then uh, we see overridden the build method that is returning something. And uh, I would like to question you guys, what kind of object do you think this is? Ah. <laughs> Yeah, it is, it is a widget. <laughs> so uh, this build method returns a widget. We, we see this uh, from uh, object-driven languages. And uh, this widget is a material app, which uh, if you can, uh, want to find more, you can also go to press F12 on, on Visual Studio or Command-B or Control-B. Uh, and this is the starting um the starting point of 
layouting an app yeah by uh, returning material app uh, with a title and the first element visible element which is a text and also we see that is wrapped in a center widget so the manner that you can actually write something visible on flutter is like you can create any widget that you want yeah this instantiates a text widget we have um, a property to put here like this is a test text and if we run it and this is something really nice on flutter each time you save you'll see your uh, updates in real time or at least you can go for hot reload and uh, reload the app instantly and this is a feature that uh, flutter framework has in uh, so we see we just put um, the first widget which is uh, the first visible widget which is, which is this text uh, it looks like it stays on top of the app so um, we'll be using for this another widget so we'll be using a center widget which will center all the content and then this uh the widget child will be the text and now we have a widget a small a really small widget tree with two components i would like to see the widget tree one second <clears throat> So I have to start it with debugging. Okay. Uh, you can find more about the widgets on the uh, official page and you can test uh, some, um, some components, visual components and non-visual components. There are visual components, those that we are looking to, and there are non-visual com components like this center container, which is not really visible, but is gaining some, is giving some properties to their child. So each widget can contain a widget and so on. And uh, this creates a widget tree that you will be seeing here, uh, here. Yeah. So considering we have the first, uh, the first container that can have, and we'll be talking in a little about rows and columns. Uh, and also each particular widget like this column can have like a uh, child's with a uh, look icon and another container which can have a, uh, another child text and so on. Uh, those are like visible uh, widgets, this icon and the text and non-visible widgets which are container row and column. But those are having and applying properties uh, on or can apply properties to the visible widgets. Good. <clears throat> so I, I try to um, open the debug um, features of, of Flutter on, uh, on Visual Studio in order to check our widget tree here. Uh, another really, really nice feature that uh, we love in Flutter is that uh, we have already in place design for creating um, application that looks like Android with Material App and uh, um, iOS with uh, Cupertino design. So if you want to find more about the components that Flutter have, you can find here by searching for Material, material Components or Cupertino Components, we'll see in a few. So those are the visual components that Google prepared directly. You can use them uh, very easily. Just let's let's take here like this floating action button. Yeah, that is a widget, and the, uh, this is a presentation video in which uh, they they are explaining how to use it and probably when to use it. And this is a code snippet here that is presenting. Uh, how you can integrate actually the this floating uh, action button. If we go to translate this code, we see the main point, which is returning an instance of my app. Perfect. If we go to the build method of my app, we see here that uh, the home uh, property obtains um, 
as a child, another instance of my stateless widget, my stateless widget, which is here. And actually in this build method, uh, everything composed visually by returning a scaffold widget with some properties. And I would like to run this example to see if we can obtain this um, floating action button. So, okay. But first, look, this is our widget tree. Yeah, we have the main app. We have the material app, the first widget. Uh, we see all the properties here. And also we have a centering widget and the visual widget. Yeah. Anytime you, uh, well, this, this is a very simple app, but when you code and we'll be having a lot of screens and a lot of widgets, one on top of each other, this will help you a lot to understand the behavior uh, of um, displaying components on your design. So let's go the, for this example. Yeah. What is the shortcut to open uh, inspection? Uh, well, um, I just got used uh, a Visual Studio, but uh, in the initial um, compilation, I run the application without debugging. And oh, okay. uh, it, yeah, you have to, to run the application with debug. If oh, okay, I, okay. I hope I'm right. But Thanks. this is what I did. I rerun the application with uh, debugging on, and now I'm able to see everything that happens and stays be, uh, behind the app. Okay, thanks. I will try the same. So I found this button here. You can run without debugging or start debugging. And when you start debugging, you see this. Mm. Leave you, am I right? Uh, um, yeah, I think there's also a shortcut if you if you do command shift P again to open the, the search and type in uh what was it debugger? Start debugging. Where, no widget. Widget. Can you write widget? Let's see what we have of Flutter. Inspect widget. Yeah. Okay. No one. So yeah, you can run. You can run this. Let's see. Inspect widget. Yeah. Oh, and you can inspect this widget, which is a text. Oh, and now if I'm clicking it, it says what I'm clicking on. Yep. Good, good. Um, so we need this flat in, uh, floating action button. For this, we need to return a scaffold. So let's put instead of our center widget, a scaffold. Now, if we save the app, we don't have anything visible on our screen, but a white screen. What happened here? So I have to put a comma. Um, okay. And this scaffold in this case has a nav bar. Look how amazing it is to obtain a nav bar on material app. So just write app bar and you can return an instance of app bar with the property title. And we can put here this is a title. What happened here? Yeah. So uh, basically, uh, we need to uh, make, I think, this property constant. I think you have to remove the const from, from the material app itself. Oh, uh, OK. No, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so I think we'll get into what const is at a later stage. Um, yeah, we'll be disabling and I, I will explain how analysis options are working for this moment. But first, let's finish this um, title. So the title, we can take a look on it and we see that uh, should receive another widget. And because we know the text widget is the best appropriate for a title, we'll be returning a text. This is a title and if we save we'll be seeing that we have the material, uh, we have the material app bar into place. And for this to be uh, not, uh, um, 
uh, underlined here anymore, we can go and uh, ignore this kind of um, uh, warning. This is not a good thing. We'll be doing just for the clearance of the code because we'll be discussing about constants in the future, not in this particular video. So we can go in the analysis option. And if we put this rule here to be false, then everything will stay quiet. Okay, and let's go for the floating action button to run an example. Um, we see here that the body of the scaffold widget, uh, it's a center widget in which we have the text. We don't need this, but the scaffold is having this property, floating action button, which is actually a button. So floating action button will be returning a floating action button instance. I think we have to write a callback for on pressed. Am I getting it right? Let's go and write here on on pressed. Okay, which is an empty function. And uh, also we can set some properties like background. This will be blue. Okay, and also we can add an icon, I think, or this is a child. Okay, we can also add a child to this widget, even if it is so small. And this can be an icon of icons and from the from the list we can select an icon that we like come on show me the list okay let's take ac unit okay and we have a snow button here yeah um uh, Okay, more easier than that, you can just copy and paste the Dart code from here. So just copy, uh, paste it, and run it. Yeah, and you have all the code that was presented. So it is very easy to reproduce the code that is in the documentation by just copying and pasting it, most of all, I think runs or you can simulate it by running an online emulator okay uh, this leads us to the discussion of the stateless and stateful widgets so flutter uh, writes apps in a reactive manner which is like for the ones that uh, know React and how to code in, into React, this will be really simple to understand. For the ones like me that uh, learn whole, their whole life the PHP coding, and <laughs> this will be uh, pretty hard, but you get it. Um, so there are stateless widgets and stateful widgets. And this is, um, the explanation is like that. When you have a stateless widget, basically, you have to rerun um, the compilation of the of the um, entire widget in order to obtain updates on the screen. Uh, and on stateful widgets, there, are, uh, there there's a this kind of widget that is able to uh, update his content by not reloading the entire widget. The use case for this is like when we want to press the button, if we want to have another text here, press the button below to be another text. Uh, in this case, probably you think like, okay, you can create a string, which is uh, text and we can be like another, another text, okay. And uh, when you press the button, okay, uh, you can put this text somehow by using a property or something. Well, this is not like that. Uh, because when you 
or when you update the the content uh this so let, let's put here like if we put here the text okay text variable and here we declare it like string text test like this string text this is a test okay okay we remove don't... the const and makes the text final stateless widgets uh, do not accept the non-final fields yeah i try to uh, somehow jump over that but i can't <laughs> uh if, yeah, I, also, if I make in this final, I can uh, I can call it in on press to change the value. So also at uh, the material app, you have const again. So we would const at the material app. Let's see. Good. Thank you. OK, so and, now in that center. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, this is uh, this is when you uh, we stopped the the warnings and now. <laughs> Thank you very much. So if you try to change the text value, okay, you expect this to work. Like, okay, I'm pressing the button and I see that this. Uh, text widget is having this test value, the value is changed, but nothing happens, yeah? And this is where the stateful widgets comes, comes in place. Um, and I would like to show you another interesting tool. So is this uh, bell here, this not bell, this light bulb here, which it is a very helpful uh, utility in Flutter. We'll be converting this to a stateful widget, yeah? and what actually does it creates a stateful instance on the same name that we had before that uh, is overriding a state of this widget. And now we can go and use the method set state for updating the text and well, this will be a problem because this, this property should be into the main. I think it was okay having it in the state itself. Yeah? Okay, yeah. Sorry. Yes, it's okay. Yeah. Let's rebuild the app. It should be there. And now if you're clicking on the arrow, you see that the text is changed. Oh, it, it is this debugger that I don't know how to cancel now. <laughs> okay, so the widget inspector should be turned off, but I don't really know where's the button to turn off. Okay, yeah. So uh, this is the main difference between a stateful and a stateless widget. Uh, you use stateful widgets when you want uh, to have dynamics into, into the app and to change the content without reloading the entire instance of the widget. Or you can use the stateless widget uh, just to show something and uh, don't expect any changes to be done in real time. And this leads us to the coding part of the app. And we are right on time, which is like very nice. Okay, so we'll be creating this splash screen of, um, of GDG Cluj. Uh, let's get rid of everything that we have on the screen right now. Okay, and then um, we just create the void main function, which is the starting point of the app. Sorry. Okay. And we need to import, oh, sorry, we need to import the material 
dot dot into this. So we have good and also we need to create uh, a stateless widget uh, another nice feature in the visual studio code integrated with uh, flutter is this that you can write just ast and then you can select and press tab and it creates the widget for you directly okay if you save it, this is like the basic app that we have. We return a container here. Okay, we'll be returning a material app widget because we use material design. And also let's put a title. GDG push. And also the home property we receive a widget, which is a scaffold. And this, if we save it, oh, if we save it, will turn our app white. Okay, uh, let's go a little and play with some properties of the scaffold. If you look on the properties of scaffold, you can go command B on Visual Studio, uh, command click on Visual Studio Code and see what are the properties of this uh, this widget? We see that we have a background color and we, I want to change this background color, for example. And then we have the body that should uh, obtain a widget. We see here uh, the placeholder and also the app bar. So let's go and make this um, background a little darker. So we have background color which is colors that gray. Okay. And now we have the background in uh, this way. And also we should put some visual content on, um, on the app. Uh, let's go for the, For the first element that we'll be needing so we need an image a text and probably a footer text so Alex, let's go quick quick question uh yeah. do you want to describe what we're going to build during these sessions so okay we'll be having a splash screen which will contain an icon uh, an image sorry a png and an svg image we'll be handling both uh, a text title and uh, some spacing, dynamic spacing, in order to make it look uh, like centered uh, and put a message in footer all the time, not using uh, custom constraints, hard coding constraints, but being as dynamic as possible. Is it good, Livio? I was thinking more about the team, but that was good as well. Well, that just complete me that we're building the GDG Cluj app? Yeah, I, I specified it. Oh, okay. In the Sorry. beginning, yeah. I might have uh, missed that. Sorry. So let's go and return a uh, text, which will be welcome to GDG. And we'll be going to the next line or Let's be like, welcome to GDG Cluj. If we save it. Yeah, we see the text that is here. So um, in order to bring the text into the center, we can wrap it with a widget that centers, with a non-visible widget that centers the content, yeah? We can use the utility for this, like wrap with center. We have this a command, a very used command to center the widget. But if we want to replicate what this utility made for us, uh, we can go and create a center widget 
and wrap it here with the property of child, which will be this text. And well, we have welcome to, and I put here an N, sorry. <laughs> welcome to GDG Cluj. Okay. We want this text center. So we play a little with the properties. We have the property style for the text widget, which will receive another widget, which is a style, text style, in which we'll be writing here the, um, about the font size. Let's make it like 30. Okay, because the title will be having a font weight of uh, font weight bold. Okay, good. Uh, also, let's make it white. Perfect. And uh, also we can get another property here, not in text style, but before style we have text align, which can be text align that center. And now we have a centered text into the app. Sorry, we have to put the comma here. Okay. Okay, so. On top of this, I want to create, uh, to, to put an image. We have the official banner of the, of uh, GDG Meetup. Here is GDG Cluj, you can see it. And uh, this is a PNG file. And in order to add a file, uh, in an image file, and usually assets to your app, you need to declare them into the pubspec YAML, which is the, uh, main configuration file for packages and uh, a part of the app behavior. Uh, in this section, you will be finding here the assets property that is commented out, will be commented, uh, commented in, like we'll be commenting out and right here that we need the folder assets to be considered for uh, our, um, visual resources and let's okay we give some space to refresh and i said like we need on top of the text widget we need to put the um, the image okay but in this scenario in this particular scenario we don't know how because the child method the child property receives a single widget and also the text is not having any child so where do we put the icon the center widget also has just a single child so we need an array of child for this we'll be using um, what flutter brings in as uh if you guys know web development like spans columns. and divs yeah we'll be using columns thank you for for being here i don't know who answered but okay so a column yeah a column is a widget that permits to have a children array of widgets one on top of each other so okay <laughs> we'll be moving the text widget from here and we'll be inserting it into our children array of the column let's save it okay also let's cancel this warning here in order to have a more clear view of the code not a good practice when you write an app so make sure that you understand why you cancel this for me it's just for demo purposes for the moment so into analysis options i disabled the preferred cons to create immutables 
and it seems like okay everything is good good so now we see that uh our column is not centered anymore our text is not centered anymore because uh actually when a uh when a columns when a column gets into place without having specified constraints bar by their ch childs or um widgets that are wrapping this column uh it will behave different that we expect in this case i will um i will remove this column this center widget using the utility i will just give the column because i want to um, show you a property that is very useful here which is a property of columns and rows we'll be checking in a row later main axis alignment this main axis alignment actually allows us to um, decide how the content of the column should behave on the screen if we say like we need to be into, into the end now we have the text on the bottom of the screen if we go for the start property now we have the text on the top of the screen and if we go on the center now we have the text on the center of the screen but also the text is not centered anymore and yeah this is because we can now wrap the text widget into a center one and center the uh, text the right way okay so on top of the text widget i said like we need the image also let's insert an image widget image and we want this image to be from asset from the assets folder and we put here the route of the image which is assets and then uh, gdg cluj that png okay let's close it to the comma and we have the image in place. Let's see what happens if this directive here is not declared. Let's refresh the app. <laughs> so it seems like nothing happens. I, I was expecting to- uh, I, think, I think you should- uh close everything and restart again they, they will then throw you a, me or a message yeah it's not for this working with hot reload let's go and see yeah i expect the uh, the image to not be shown and uh, to have a narrow placeholder for this so let's go okay until uh, compiles we see that we have the image widget here which is bringing us the image and below we have the text that is in a center widget for uh, centering uh, horizontally and those are uh, one of top of, on top of each other because using this array of children's uh, array of widgets in the children property of a column yeah so imagine like a column is uh, uh yeah it is it is a column of widget and it permits to um, create like this stack one above each other on widgets we have also rows uh a really curious thing here we have the main axis alignment and also we have another property which is cross axis alignment um those properties are really similar but uh, reflects the way that the components into the column of the row uh, or the row should be placed. Uh, the main axis alignment uh, on a column refers to the vertical uh, axis and how the components behave on the uh, vertical uh, arrangement. And uh, the cross axis alignment is on the horizontal, on the X. <laughs> Uh, axis and how the uh, content should behave on uh, horizontal but on by using rows actually these properties got 
or inverse. So if I use a row, uh, we, we have to wait to build, but we expect these components to be one next to each other. Yeah, because we now put them into a row. And also those components should center the content. I don't know if there will be any, pro, uh, any errors here, but also um, the main axis alignment changes for row because the main X for a row is the horizontal X in, uh, and for the column, it is the vertical X, yeah. Good. We have to wait for, for building it just to see if the assets folder works <laughs> or not. Okay. Good, 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 good. So the dev tools are running uh, without debugging also. I just think I closed it by, by my reflex. Okay. Uh, but why the debugger is opened right now? Because I started the app without debugging. Okay. So yeah, we see we have this placeholder here, unable to load the asset. So thank you for the point of um, restarting the app. This is why you need to declare into the pub spec YAML to declare the path for uh, your resources that you'll be bringing into the, into the app. I expect now to load the image. <clears throat> so it seems not, I don't want to rebuild the app again. Let's go for hot reloading. I think you have to. Yeah. No, oh, no, no, you can go for hot reload. Yay. So this is like the future that I mentioned before. You don't have to compile the entire app. You can use the hot reload. Okay. Um, so what happened if you want to uh, to have the image a little ringed, like uh, we to not uh, reach the margins directly? And we can use another widget, which is a really good one for positioning, the padding widget with a property of edge insets all. So let's make it like having 15 pixels and we move the child, we move the image as a child for this padding widget. Okay, we have two commas here, this is the problem. Okay, and now I have some padding on the image, which is actually looking great. And uh, let's move the title a little down. And for this, we can space the elements by using a sized box widget, which is not a visible widget, but it can be visible if you want some space. We'll be giving a height of 14. And now we have a little space into our splash screen. Okay. Good. Um, so yeah, let's go and put into the bottom of the app a widget that says made with love uh, in Flutter. Yeah, and uh, we'll be using like made with love, which will be a text widget uh, and Flutter, uh, the Flutter logo will be the SVG float um, image that we have here. So first of all, let's go and add a new child at the end of this um, array, which will be a text for the moment and we'll be writing made with and uh, leave you teach me this you can actually look for heart emoji and copy it so we can take this 
and just paste it in our code base. Made with love and flutter. Okay, let's save it. We see that it's not actually on the bottom of the app. Uh, I would like to give some properties to this text in order to style it a little. So let's style it with uh, uh, Okay, sorry, <laughs> I was losing my idea. Let's style it with a font size. Okay, of 20. Good. Uh, we can go for a text color that can be white. Why not? Colors that white. Okay, and or we can keep it black in contrast. I don't know. Just let this property. Okay, made with loving Flutter. And instead of Flutter, we need to put the SVG format image, which is here. Uh, an SVG image is actually a vectorial image that is converted by um mostly utilities that can show all the all the data as an image but flutter doesn't have uh does not have this natively so you can actually uh without using an extension you can't use uh this um, svg logo and this leads us to uh, their favorite expression uh, um, there is a widget for that so we have this question in mind, how we can add a Flutter logo or a logo into, into the app, uh, an SVG logo. Uh, and for this, we can go for pub.dev, which is um, the repository of Dart and Flutter extensions. And we'll be looking for SVG. We need something that runs on SVG. And uh, yeah, leave you uh, if you are still here. Please uh, let us know how you decide if a package is good to be used or not. It's a good question. Uh, mostly, you can see the number of likes for every project. So, for example, Flutter SVG has two thousand four hundred likes, um, which means people have used it and have liked its utility. So that's a good indicator. Uh, you also have the Flutter favorite tag, uh, which is a tag that only Google can give you uh, for a specific package. So these are Google recommended packages. So whenever you, you see a Flutter favorite package, is it safe, it's safe to use and you should use it. Uh, also the popularity uh, is a good number to look at um, if it, it will be almost 100% if it's still maintained, um, which you, you need the package to be maintained. Um, and yeah, I think that's about it. And it should not be like this, no? Yes, it should not be like that. <laughs> a big red sign. You edible. <laughs> okay, so if uh, we go for the, uh, considering what Livio says, and thank you very much for the explanations, uh, we'll be going for this package, Flutter SVG. Okay, let's see the description. Um, so this is a Dart native rendering library. Okay. And what we can do with it, probably draw SVG. Yeah, this is the, the a quick parenthesis, Alex, sorry. Uh, if you notice in the right top right, you can also see the publisher. And if the publisher has that check mark um, to the left of the name, then they're also have been vetted by Google and they're a safe publisher. So also look out for that. Thank you. And uh, as far as I know from inside, if you have uh, if you have a package that you love and you see that the developer is not maintaining it anymore, you can actually contact uh, Flutter community and uh, they can uh, Google can take the ownership of the package and update it and maintaining uh, 
maintain it to the best version possible. So they publicly declared that that they are uh, taking a lot of uh, ownership on a lot of uh, packages just to keep them updated and uh, uh, ready to use. Okay, so now we discuss about what stands for having a package in our app because yeah we know there's a package for that we see there is a package for svg but how do we get use of it so we have the installing tab here and we see we can run this command with flutter flutter pub add flutter svg and this will add a line to our package uh, pub spec yaml file or we can actually write it into the pub spec YAML file with the version that we need. Uh, this means like all the packages, um, we take Flutter SVG, uh, but not lower than th this version. And when a version or new version comes up, this will take care of being updated automatically. Am I right, Livio? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, if I'm going to our app, I, I just copied that rule and here into dependencies, I can paste this package, Flutter SVG version 1.3, and save it. Um, Visual Studio Code and Android Studio as well run Flutter pub get directly in order to get the package. And now we can get, we can use it. Okay, but, but, but we need to present the logo in the same row with the made with the text, like made with love in Flutter. And I already answered this. We need a row because row is having a children property, which is expecting an array of widgets, not uh, just a single widget. And we move this text widget from here to the children property first position of the children property of a row. And if we save it, we see that uh, the text got aligned to the center. Perfect. Next, instead of Flutter, the word Flutter, we need this uh, Flutter SVG element. And uh, for this, we can take a look on the example to see. So they are having a, here a list of strings, we don't want this, we don't need this. So those are just declarations. I need to see how they are handling the picture. So look here, SVG picture, that asset. And probably icon names, it seems to be, okay, a route to the SVG file. So this is what we need, SVG pic picture, that asset. Let's write it. As v svg picture okay asset and here we have the route of our asset oh. <laughs> assets slash flutter svg okay let's save it Okay, so we have the logo in place and we have a really nice error. So there are two kinds of errors into, into Flutter. You know, on the Mac, you have the white screen of death. On Linux, I don't know what screen of death is. And also on Windows is the blue screen of death. On Flutter is the red screen of death. So if you have an error and actually Flutter is able to uh, render the app, I don't know if we'll render the app if I'm making a really bad error here. No, I'm not able to save it. But if somehow you have an error, an unhandled error, the screen will turn red with white text, which is not so good to see. And we have also this uh, black and uh, uh, yellow strip, uh, which is um, representing the fact that we overflow uh, the uh, in in the outside of the screen, and for this we need to see on this asset if we have a width problem a width property. We have it width. It's a double. Let's go and make this 
logo a width of 150. Good. So we made it smaller. Um, between the text and the SVG picture, let's go for size box. Alex, can I add something? Sure. Uh, yeah, I forgot about this, but um, Alexandru Pavel uh, mentioned in the channel, in the chat, uh, for a Flutter logo, we have a, a, Flutter, a Flutter logo class, which we can use for logo. Without yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, thank you very much for this. Uh, I was totally, so I forgot about it, but <laughs> yeah, uh, there is a, a class that uh, is actually uh, acting like, like a placeholder when you create the app just to not have to add all the pictures you can use the Flutter logo. Okay, thank you, Alex. Very nice, very nice explanations. So let's go for this method just to see it. I will love to use the SVG picture because this demonstrates how we can get, get used about a uh get uh, how to use a package but we have flutter logo okay which is a method that gives us the flutter logo without the text <laughs> we have it with text yeah thank you very much so are there any oh so there is text color flutter logo style let's see style which is a flutter logo style dot and what are the properties here? It's mark only stacked. Uh, so yeah, this is flutter with the text below and this is flutter horizontal this means like it is the one okay it is the one that we have into svg it is very very small let's see if we can set a high property no size so we have a size of it is a double <laughs> yeah this is nice so we obtained the same result <laughs> let's put two two logos we had uh, i don't know if i copied the flutter svg container this is my most favorite do, uh, thing to do as a programmer to go back copy and then go forward and paste it again Okay, let's put it here. Good. So yeah, our our logo is darker a little, but it seems very similar with the one that uh, is prepared by the Flutter logo method. So thank you very much. Let's let's comment out this code and let it here if you want, if you guys want to see it in the future. Yeah, I see there, there was a lot of activity in the chats. I don't see any, any notifications. Yeah, uh, so you know, if you want to get rid about the debug ribbon, yeah, uh, you can mention into, uh, I think, into the material app. Let's see, debug, yeah. Um, which is false and we can disable the debug logo perfect let's see opening the command palette follow the instruction for okay perfect oh there's a lot of activity thank you guys for for being so active okay let's make the final thing on this app which is like aligning everything uh, into the row widget will be having the main axis alignment also as a center 
value main axis alignment center. We need this to be centered. Ta -da! This was it. So yeah, we have a row with a text with a size box and uh, an asset. Here we have the Flutter logo. And what happened? We need to find a way to put this made with Flutter, made with love in Flutter, to put it into the footer and also to maintain the GDG Cluj Napoca and the text into the center of the app. And for this, we'll be uh, getting, um, we'll be using another column that will sort out our columns. Yeah. So it seems like sounds pretty complicated, but it will be uh, pretty, pretty simple. So for this, we have this column here with the children and we'll be adding another column. And let's insert the children property here. And we'll be moving from our call. We'll be moving actually the entire column and then we can extract the widget, the row below. So everything that stays with warnings should be moved. Okay. So now we have a column with a column. We see the content is uh, getting like pretty crazy. Um, and we did this because we need after this column to create another one. So here we create another column. Okay. And into the child property, we'll be inserting our row, which is the bottom text that we need to put in place into the bottom section of the app. So here, okay. What happens is like into this column, we'll be using the main axis alignment property for being main axis alignment end, yeah? So now this will be uh, sorted out and arranged on the end, but because we use a column in a column, the highest property of this column is not used anymore. So for this, we need to wrap it in another widget, which is called expanded. So what we did here, um, we basically expanded the whole width of this widget. Yeah, the whole column. Uh, let's go for the widget tree. So it, Open DevTools widget inspector page. Ta -da! That was the option. <laughs> okay, let's see what we have here to understand what happens with our widget tree. So we have our scaffold app, yeah. And also, this is the column that contains all the elements. And we created this for having two other columns. The column that will be having the main axis alignment into the bottom, yeah. And we need this to be at the bottom and also this to be uh, into the center. I don't see if, okay. The expanded widget will expand all the columns. So we have like a height of 844. This means like uh, this container here is taking all the uh, all the highs of this and will be uh, centering then with the main axis alignment center property will be centering the content that is the padding widget with the image the padding in margins and the widget uh, the image and then the size box which is um, of high 40 and a center widget that is centering the text and what leave you teach me and this is like very nice to uh, to know. Uh, there is another widget and that uh, we can use for wrapping all this column because we see that this content is going into the bottom uh, line of the uh, of of the phone of the simulator, and we don't like this. I don't really know how to fix this by using some hive, but this depends on the phone. So there is a widget. There is a widget for that. 
called um, safe area. And this widget wraps all the content into the safe area. Uh, it is very interesting to see what happens if we uh, put the entire scaffold into safe area. Because on the iPhone, the safe area is considered starting from this point to the point below. So the ribbon is not part of the safe area. You have to know this. This is the reason that we uh, wrapped the columns into the safe area widget. Okay. So a uh, question, how many of you try to code this app with us and with me. Unfortunately, I can't see you. Is there anyone? We had to code uh, in the same time as you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We expected this, <laughs> we haven't expected to <laughs> uh, not code with us, but okay, this code um, will be available on the branch, on the session one branch uh, on the repo. I did, but I was left behind because I had no extensions installed for Dart. Okay, it is very nice to, to hear that. Make sure that you check the repository and you will be having all this code. I personally installed it on my phone and it feels like amazing. Um, okay, so I would love to uh, ask you guys if you have some questions for the moment. And then to discuss a little more about uh, some resources that you can check for the next session. Okay. So, uh, Vojko, do you need do you still need my my screen open? Yeah, that would be ideal. Cool. Great. So, guys, are there any questions? Are there any opinions? Question. question. Um, uh, yeah, but I think I also. Oh, never mind. I'll start with the question. Um, <laughs> wouldn't safe area break the layout if uh, we had a, a bottom navigation bar at the scaffold? Oh, this is very nice to to see. Because I, I'm used to wrapping the entire scaffold with the safe area to avoid the uh, issues with the button navigation bar, but I, I had never actually tested it. So uh, let's see a button navigation bar. Is this so it's having a property called items? I don't really. I think yeah. it's a little bit more complicated to add a bottom okay. navigation bar. Can we go to the, to the uh, or a bottom app bar? You, you, I think you have a bottom app bar, which is simpler than navigation bar. Uh, Let's see. No, uh, as an object to the bottom navigation bar at. Uh, oh, okay. And you have a bottom up bar. Yeah, which you can okay. add a widget child. Okay. Uh, let's go for an icon. Access allowed. <laughs> Let's save it. Okay. So it seems like it's not considering the safe mm -hmm. area because we haven't wrapped it into the safe area. But if we wrap yeah. it into the safe area. Yeah, it's, it's uh, quite uh, smart. Well, for the moment, is logic why, why? No, it is not so smart. <laughs> so wrapping the scaffold into the safe area it seems like, yeah, it's wrapping also the bars and the drawer and everything. So I don't hey, see- you, any... you have two safe areas. You have one in the body and one wrapping the scaffold. 
yeah we can we can extract that doesn't matter for the moment so we can remove that but the result will be the same look and this is because okay. safe area is wrapping everything without top and bottom and, uh, okay yeah and the and, and the battle bottom map are already has some kind of safe area it knows how to yeah yeah uh, it's clear yeah probably when they design the scaffold we consider they consider that so it is like okay <laughs> what should we do when you have this and probably they are having a little let's see let's see on the bottom up bar Voiko, are you ready with the code? Yeah, all good. So we, look, it's this notch margin. So probably they took care of, about it somehow. Yeah, we have to keep in mind that uh, uh, the layout system of Flutter, you know, that um, um, widget have uh, constraints based on their parents yeah so. well it depends that can be on their child or their parents also so yeah this is a a thing that you can learn just by testing it yeah cool. so, yeah oh, when you have guys when you have a column that is into another column and the final child is a text. The last column will take the width of the text. But if you have just a column and the text, the column will take the full width of the available container. So this is something that you can, I don't know. Uh, they, it is documented, but I don't know if there are this behavior exists like to go uh, on, on web to see how this behaves. I know there is a section in Fl on Flutter Dev which talks about uh, the constraints. I'll look, I'll look it up and I'll put the link in the chat. Sure. Make sure that you do it in the next few minutes because we are yes, yes. mostly ready. Uh, okay. Uh, so what you guys can read after, after this session is about theming on Flutter. We'll be sending some resources for the next event and uh, you can take a look about the main theme of Flutter and how you can change properties and get used of the properties uh, by, I don't know, changing or uh, using global properties. In this case, we specified the colors uh, manually. So like the color white, color gray, but you can use, uh, let's see, you can use like uh, the theming not API like feature of uh, of Flutter. This theme data, yeah, in which you can uh, describe the primary color and all 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 that stands for the main uh, components that you'll be using. And if you uh, if you want to use like let's see let's let's take this blue color, so it is theme of context, and we have here the property let's go for primary primary color yeah okay so now we change the background by using the uh, the theme property which can be generally available for an app and you can actually change the theme just by changing the theme data object and the whole app design will be changed so make sure that you search for this. We will be sending you some links. And also, uh, I saw you mentioned into the chat, and thank you for this. Uh, we wanted to discuss about it. Um, if you don't have or you don't need to have the IDE in place, you can use an online simulator, which is really good for, for testing code. Uh, and this is Dart Pad. So dartpad.dev, it is a, a framework. It is an online application that permits you to run Dart code or Flutter code. 
and you can go for some samples. Let's see the uh, the counter app of Flutter. Yeah, so they are loading the main that Dart file, which you saw into our IDE. This is completely online, and now you'll be seeing an emulation of this code base. If Okay, so this is like the Hello World app of Flutter. When you create an app on Flutter, you have this floating button uh, action uh, and uh, this text with, yeah, we see that there's a stateful widget in which you have the set state uh, method function called for incrementing the counter, the counter that is used where, 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 where? here, here. If we increment this by two, and run it, when we press, so I don't know, are are they having hot reload into <laughs> the dark part online? It seems that they are not having, so well, now we're incrementing by two. It's, uh, I think it's compiling it to, JavaScript since yeah. uh, it's a web app. Yeah, so, so is this dot JS library? I think so. I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, I never used it, but I know about it. So this is the support that uh, brings Flutter and Dart to the web. So this is what they are using for compiling Dart files to JavaScript. And then, yeah, because it's JavaScript, you can run it on web. What you haven't saw, guys, until I haven't presented. So we run all the code on the my instance. I have the iPhone connected also, but we can run this as a Chrome, uh, like a web app or a desktop app for Mac. Let's go for the web app and try to compile also our version for web JavaScript. So run without debugging. Let's see. It will launch into Chrome. This means like exactly what Flutter is promising using the same code base for having um, multiple um, environment compiled apps ready to run. Adrian uh, put a link into, into the chat about the constraints and Leon constraints. Thank you very, very much, Adrian. It feels very nice guys to have you here and to, to see that you are so supportive and interactive. So yeah, this is the explanation of, look, you have a container of color red, perfect. You have some constraints, but when you center it, yeah, it seems like it turns different. And also you can use the alignment property to align the container. Nice, nice. You can take a look on that. It is. So make sure that you compile as much code as you can and try to understand it. It is very easy to be learned. There are some complex principles as well. So I'm having a hard time with some of them, but uh, it feels very nice to compile an app on, on Flutter and have it on your phone. So yeah, this is, this is like the next level of creating mobile apps for me. Waiting for, okay, I don't see if <laughs> it runs on Chrome. No, no, no. So probably there is an error or something. Let's make it again. Okay. Um, for um, future learning. So if you need to get started, uh, the best, material that I saw. So it was, they're having a lot of content, free content. So make sure that you go on flutter.dev and look for courses and uh, workshops, and you'll be seeing a lot, a lot of information on how to do this. Um, you can also go for, uh, for searching for books. There are a lot of free books or uh, anyway, they're like really Affordable. I personally learn a lot from Flutter reference, Flutter complete reference. Um, but there are a lot, a lot, a lot of other books as well. This is like um, 
presenting briefly presenting uh, what is Dart and how to uh, create object driven uh, scripts or code into Dart from starting from scratch. And then uh, it takes you from Flutter as well. So it seems like our web application was compiled. Let's check it. Let's check it. Okay. Come on. Okay. So this is the version of the app in Google Chrome. So yeah, it looks great. Everything is centered and it is as we decided to be. So it feels like we did a great job for the splash screen. Okay, do you guys have any other questions or opinions? Let's have some 10 minutes of open discussions about the subject. How do you feel about Flutter? Me personally, I uh, I quite like it. <laughs> I'm uh, in April, I think I, I make no in March actually. I'm uh, reaching two years of flutter. Oh, so this is yeah. Like this, this time. Yeah, first. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, it's nice. great now. Uh, I'm. Uh, I've worked with it on uh, mobile, on web. Uh, I've also tested it on uh, desktop. I'm. I'm a Linux uh, user, so I'm testing it on uh, <laughs> Linux as well. So, and I find it uh, quite enjoyable. At the moments, uh, there are moments where it's uh, frustrating, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, as uh, there are still uh, a few things I uh, I find hard to grasp. Yeah, because it's, uh, mostly I tend to forget, so to speak, because despite uh, learning it, uh, I, I tend to forget them. Yeah. Do you have any public app that you can share with us? Uh, yeah, but one is on both on Google Play and App Store. It's called uh, Where Get Social. It's an app from uh, from uh, for Constanza. Yeah. Cool. You are from for social Constanza? events. Yeah. Mm, nice. Uh, and now I'm uh, working as a lead developer on in a in a startup called uh, which has a mobile app, mobile app named uh, smart hearts smart hearts smart hearts hearts uh, I'll, I'll write in the in the chat <laughs> okay smart hearts yeah so yeah i know um we have Marius here and we uh, he works very, very hard for uh, replicating an app and he was like very ambitious to try to gain all the functionalities from that app and I, it, it was a really frustrating process and it took him like a lot, but he finally reached out somehow and it was like, oh, I found a solution and it is better than the original app, you know. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Adrian. So uh, you're on the seaside, yeah, coding on the beach. No, 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 no. I, I live in Turcia. Well, almost seaside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Uh, guys, another opinions. How do you find this episode of Flutter Festival? Okay, well, if there are not any other questions. Oh, so if you are in need of a CV or resume, feel free to try out my tool made in Flutter web. Cool, visual. Thank you very much. I, I'm taking notes here. Oh, looks quite nice. Did you open here? Yeah, 
Yeah, let's see. Yeah. We still have four minutes. So it's also snappy. It, it's, not, it's, it's not complete, but functionality. Yeah, this is nice. Very nice. Cool. So make sure when when you when you post it, make sure that you send us the link into community because I want to make my resume into your app. <laughs> it, it it looks great. Cool. So many features. So this is like a personal project. It seems. To uh, yes. Yeah, very nice app. I, I just have this feeling that I can drag and drop everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. I'm trying to drag and drop and see if something oh, it, works. It works, it works. You can drag it. Yeah? Yeah, you can drag an interest here. Look. But why? I'm just dragging it without any... And why others are selecting my content? So there are, oh, this is a shared app. This is nice. So we are, we are more than one person on this, you know? Cool. Oh, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. So you make changes and I see those changes. I was like, okay, who changed it? I think you changed it because on my computer, it looks totally different, so. <laughs> just force refresh it you know <laughs> yeah no, i, I, I don't you... think i don't think it would make sense to have a shared uh, resume builder because it's <laughs> kind of personal <laughs> yeah uh yeah so when you hover on the left side of the old items education or work experience uh, you see the hover on the right side so maybe that's what uh, confused you yeah, but it, it looks nice. Congratulations. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. So what what projects do you guys working on? So instead, so we have yeah, commercial apps and jobs on Flutter, but I'm interested on those personal projects that are really excited for you, exciting for you. Well, I'm working on a, on an article for Medium which is uh, about uh, putting uh, Superbase and Navigator 2.0 to together uh, with uh, Block. It sounds very complicated. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's very complicated. <laughs> I I've done two, uh, three actually, articles on uh, building uh, uh, navigation with uh, Navigator 2.0 and uh, Block. Very nice. So I still have a, a hard time to understand Block. So just bear with me. I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> I am trying. Uh, you know? <laughs> yeah, the latest version, um, they changed in the latest version how they uh, uh, work with Block. So it's uh, more confusing, I think, for others to uh, grasp it. Yes. Uh, yeah. There is this. any implementation of, um, I don't know, Apple Watch or an Android Watch with Flutter? Uh, I don't know. I know there are talks about uh, SDK being able to build uh, for watches, but uh, I forgot where I saw this or where I read it. Yeah, yeah. I'm so interested about this. Okay, on. so this was our time, guys, for today. Thank you very much, very much <laughs> for being with me. I hope you like it uh next time we'll be going for more extra features until we uh we'll be integrating an api we'll be also uh doing some state management stuff and we'll be obtaining this app for gdg inclusion poca and uh yeah just bear 
bear with us for the next sessions and see you in a week i think is this in a week yeah yeah is this so i found there is a package for android android uh, wearables uh, wearables wearables uh, watches yeah yeah but it's not having that badge of uh... <laughs> it's um there are two i found the one flutter underscore wear and another which is simple simple wear yeah but uh, the both wear, for android yeah the wear package is from flutter community so i think it's on the safe side a bit i will be taking a look definitely okay so thank you very much gdg Poka, for helping us to create this event and thank you for our sponsors see you guys next week and i hope you get more dirty on hands with flutter code <laughs> okay thank you for being here and have a really nice evening bye thank bye you bye bye. Okay. bye 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 guys bye